to do is a little bit of an experiment. Instead of giving my usual talk, what I'm going to do is show you 20 of my favorite cat videos and use those videos to tell the story of the festival. So we're going to try to do that as an experiment. I haven't done this before, but I think that's kind of the spirit of why we're here. So for 20 years, we'll do 20 cat videos. So let's start with the simple formula. Not too radical. And if you haven't seen a cat video before, we're going to have a little entry. This is like, I'm going to show you what Roger Ebert described as the greatest cat video of all time, and also the winner of our first festival. So we'll just start with that. Eh bien, je suis toujours ici. Chacun des moments tôt peut lever froid comme un globe de ça. Il nécessite tout ce temps maintenant délicat. Je suis libre de lit, ma jeunesse. Les quinze jours par jour, je dors dans aucune fête. Je me réveille à la nuit même. Immortalisé sur l'amour. Oublier sur le plancher. Comme mes tutus par ici, ils devenaient un folio. Pourtant, je ne sens rien. Et partaient des délicieuses collections, ou juste où de porter. Ils m'aiment encore sans pitié. Moi, son sentant se tomber. Blanc et baissé, c'est trop sous sachet à la mendicité pour les cheeseburgers. Je suis enterré pour das idiots. Attention au chat. Pas si j'aimais les fonds. Encore, j'ai appris quelques petites choses. La crème fouettée dans la salle de bain n'est pas la crème fouettée. Nous ne pouvons pas nous échapper. Parfois, la porte du chat est fermée. That is Henri Le Chat Noir. And the idea behind the Internet Cat Video Festival is what happens if we take content like this that many of you maybe have seen before, maybe dozens of times. But you've seen it on your computer, on your phone. What happens if we take that offline into more of a shared communal experience? So we did this at the Walker Arts Center, and people just kept coming. And they arrived in our lawn, and we had 10,000 people show up to the first festival, which is a little bit of this reaction. Now, it isn't shocking that people like cat videos, but what's shocking is how many people came out to share this experience offline. And also, what was interesting about it is this really diverse crowd. It wasn't just a bunch of hipsters coming out and see the ironic thing to watch the cat videos. Now, this is like somewhat risky doing this in the context of an art museum, where usually you don't do these type of experiments. So this was, you know, it could have failed. <laughs> but it didn't. And it was this wonderful moment. And so we celebrate a little bit.
But how this happened was creating a space for the possibility of this happening. So part of this is work that went many years before this, of creating a space and a platform where you put something out there that it could possibly happen. And that's something that we did at the Walker. And because of that, it was also something that certain things fail, certain things succeed, but you need to have some sort of a space where that possibility can be there. <laughs> and of course, the things that work are usually the unexpected things. Did we think that this was going to become this huge phenomenon that's now become a tour? No. But when it did happen, we knew how to take advantage of that situation. Just so you know, that cat is actually fine. I've gotten to know a lot of these people and that cat's fine. Then the interesting thing about this is that it kept going. What was really just going to be a one-off thing became a tour and then a second festival. This is an image from the Minneapolis, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Minnesota State Fair. We did the second festival, had almost 13,000 people pay to come and watch cat videos. The night before was Depeche Mode, they drew 9,000 people. So we outdrew Depeche Mode by 3,000 people to watch cat videos. And now this festival is in, nearing its fourth year. It's been in 125 different cities, nine different countries. It's been in legitimate film festivals and in a lot of really legitimate museums all throughout the world. And that still confuses people a little bit. So the question shifts is like, why? So what is it about this? Why does it have a different type of staying power? One answer to that is cat people. People love their cats. People love to share that content online. And what this provided was a place to come offline for this community that existed to get together in the real world. And sometimes dress up. But it became this thing that there was apparently a need for that this provided. The one thing that's nice about a cat is that they're soft. You know, most house plants receive better care than most house cats. After all, the cat is a thing of beauty, like a work of fine art. You have to watch the whole thing sometime online. All right, so, <laughs> but is it art? This question comes up all the time in its context. Um, here's a birthday party of the cat. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Papa. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to that art question, but um, halftime show. So uh, what's interesting about this is creating some interesting juxtapositions, kind of finding some clever connections between things. This is one of my favorite videos of all time in this, and I'm proud to say that when we found this video, it had much less views than it has now. Boot. Cat. Boot. Thank you. 
If you haven't seen that before, you're welcome. <laughs> so one of the other reasons why this works is that it's authentic. This is something art museums don't do well, is do things that aren't ironic, things that are sincere, things that don't have some sort of critical distance, but really did this from a place of wanting to share this and have a certain authenticity to it, and people responded to that. <laughs> And it's universal. What's interesting about this is it showed in many other countries, it seems to transcend language and culture. It's been in several film festivals. This is, it's been in the Vienna Independent Shorts, I think now for three straight years. But it's something that seems to be something that's in every country that we're getting submissions, so it's crowdsourced, or so getting submissions from all over the world. And there are some things that maybe don't age as well, and this just like anything else. And, but there's something about the cat video that's kind of transcended being just a meme or just a celebrity cat. Now, there can be some tension in this, particularly when you do this type of work inside the context of a museum. Some people like this, some people don't. Um, and at times I think what's interesting inside the institution and also kind of how it's been portrayed in the media is that it can be a certain tolerating of it. Or at times where I can tell you internally, inside of the institution, I feel a little bit more like this. <laughs> and sometimes that some of that is uh, heightened when you have pieces like having a New Yorker cartoon spoofing something that you've done. I will tell you for me, this is a career highlight to have something being made fun of in The New Yorker. Uh, and I think at the end, institutions just need to lighten up a little bit. Um, and to just not worry so much. <laughs> so putting the festival back into this cultural context, the thing that, I, like a lot of the work that I do, it's really that fun doesn't need to be frivolous. Smart doesn't have to be boring.
So since that initial festival, I was actually recruited away by another museum to start a whole new division. And within that division is to really, it's a new curatorial division, to try to do more of these experiences, to learn from this and try to put other content into basically the same format like the Cathedral Festival. And I think what a lot of us know is that people are hungry for these unique experiences, particularly experiences that can't happen online, that have to be something that happens in real life. And so this is, a, behind all this is an image um, that we just did about a month ago in Indianapolis, where it was 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so 20 degrees below freezing, where we had 300 people watching the movie Fargo outside, totally bundled up in the spirit of the film, creating these immersive experiences for people. So what I'm really interested in is that place where I think the Cafe Duke Festival does this, is where pop culture and more the art world kind of meet in the middle, and both sides aren't happy. That's a good place to be. doesn't get old. Um, and like we're doing now, so it isn't just about watching cat videos. So what I think is important about this, and we're going to show one more video here, and I'm going to show you just so they can get a mini version of the festival. because so I want us to kind of share in this moment. I think I go back to, you know, Drew actually said it yesterday morning when we were kind of kicking everything off about this feeling at a moment, and I think anniversaries are kind of that moment too, of thinking about assessment, but also a pause, where I think we're looking at now about what's important. I also think there's a little bit of this slowing down. You're seeing that happen in other areas, like you know, slow food culture is one example of that. But wanting to have these little bit more, these different experiences. So what I invite you to do for the next four minutes here as I'm closing things out, is to enjoy this video, be in the moment, and just have a little bit of joy. And I think a lot of this is about just having a time where you can have something joyful, forget about everything else, and just be in that moment. Because it's about watching cat videos together.
to the darkest of the street. Thank you very much.